We're on the August, uh, welcome to the August 11, 2023 meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission. Hearings before this commission are quasi-judicial in nature. It is a design review process to determine whether a proposed project is congruous with the special character of the historic district or landmark in which it is located. Decisions of the commission are based on the record of these proceedings, the Wilmington design standards for historic districts and landmarks, and the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. Evidence submitted to the commission for review will become part of the record. Appeal of a commission decision must be submitted to the Wilmington Board of Adjustment within 30 days of the date of the commission's action. Further appeal must be submitted to Superior Court. Evidence pertaining to an agenda item must be presented during the evidentiary portion of that item. Individuals who wish to address the commission will be sworn in as witnesses to present material and substantial evidence. The chair will recognize each witness who wishes to address the commission during the evidentiary portion. In order to ensure that witness evidence is properly recorded, each individual should come to the podium and clearly state their name and address before addressing the commission. As a brief reminder, members of the commission are appointed by and serve at the pleasure of city council. Our charge is with respect to the protection and preservation of properties located within the city's designated historic districts. Commission, the commission is held to the requirements of the Wilmington Design Standards for Historic Districts and Landmarks, as well as the applicable North Carolina state law. We are to determine whether exterior changes to a building are congruous with the special character of the city's historic districts. It is important that the commission deliberate the merits of each request in a manner that provides a record of the basis for our decisions. Please remember that our deliberation should be centered on how a project meets the Wilmington design standards and whether the changes are congruous. Commissioners, if you have received or been made aware of any information outside this evidentiary hearing related to the agenda item before the commission, please recuse yourself from that agenda item. Before the meeting begins, please ensure that all cell phones are in silent mode and turned off. I would like to introduce city staff, which is uh, here to help us tonight. Um, Ms. Melissa Huffman, the assistant, no, Melissa's not here, sorry. Linda Painter, our planning director. Oh, Melissa is here, sorry. Assistant city attorney. <laughs> Ms. Linda Painter, planning director. Ms. Jessica Baldwin, historic preservation planner. Megan Basic, our associate planner. And Amy Bradshaw, our planning coordinator. I am Kathleen Egan, the Commission Chair, and my fellow Commissioners will now introduce themselves. Ross Tomaselli. Stephen Sulky. Wilson. Ron Wilson. Thank you. And now we will swear in those present who wish to present evidence related to an agenda item. I could have staff applicants and any member of the public to please stand up and be sworn in. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. We have the commission has, uh, the members of the commission have received copies of the minutes from the July meeting. Um, are there any suggested edits or correction to the draft minutes from our last meeting? Okay, then I need a motion to accept the minutes. I move to approve. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll now move on to the evidentiary portion of the meeting. We have four agenda items tonight, and the first one is 305 Church Street. All right, I brought the wrong thing. Okay, the applicant proposes to construct a rear addition 
The subject property is located on the north side of Church Street between South 3rd and 4th Streets and is a contributing resource in the historic district residential. Revisions to all facades of the building and the site are subject to resign review in this district. The Kelly House at 305 Church Street was built circa 1920, is a one and a half story colonial revival style dwelling with a side gable, asphalt shingled roof, and clapboard siding. The front facade features a central open pediment hooded entry portico supported by simple posts, and the six panel entry door is accented by a fan light transom. All facades feature six over one windows with simple architrave trims and the exterior trimly chimney adorns the western facade. The applicant proposes to construct an addition along the rear north facade. The addition will be seven feet by two inches wide by 13 feet and seven inches long, the, an approximately 98 square feet. The addition will be set back from the western property line two feet six inches and from the northern property line two feet five inches. The proposed addition will have a foundation, siding, and roofing material, all that match the existing dwelling, and the existing door will be reused. The proposed addition will not exceed the height of the existing structure and will not be visible from the public right away. Staff would like to enter tonight's report in its entirety to the record. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions for staff? Okay, at this point, we would like to invite the applicant to come forward and um, provide additional information or answer any questions. The applicant's not here. Okay. Ma'am, you didn't stand up to be sworn in. No, I wasn't planning on. She's... <laughs> so they'll, they'll just do it now? Yep. You need to be sworn in in case you can, so you can answer any questions. And that so, way we can get it in the record. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions for the applicant? Ma'am, can you state your name Francis, to the record? Uh, Francis White, 305 Church Street. To the microphone. Francis White, 305 Church Street. Is this just a simple mud room in the back? It's just a closet expansion. Okay. I have no closet space. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so it's got it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll open the evidentiary portion to members of the public. We'll close the evidentiary portion and move to commissioner deliberation. Questions? It's just Okay, could somebody read a motion then? I'll read it. Okay, I move to approve with conditions the construction of a rear addition. Details are shown in the drawings, plans, photographs, submittals, and narrative st statement contained in the application and submittal materials. The statements made in this meeting are a part of the request unless otherwise noted. The motion is based on the evidence presented before us, the application submittals, testimony, staff reports, including the finding of facts. The following conditions shall be applied to ensure compliance with the design standards so set forth in staff report one through three. The proposed request with conditions does comply with the Wilmington design standards for historic districts and landmarks is compatible with materials, features, design, context, and character of historic buildings and historic district which is located and is congruous with the site streetscape and historic aspects of the historic district residential as a whole, all applicable design standards. Do we hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we will move to the second agenda item, 527 South Front Street. The applicant proposes to install vinyl windows. The subject property is located on the east side of South Front Street between Church and Castle Streets. The front facade faces east and the dwelling is a non-contributing resource in the historic district residential. Provisions to all facades of a building and the site are subject to design review in this district. 527 South Front Street, built 1987, 
is the easternmost unit of a back-to-back -back duplex designed in a contemporary style to mimic elements of the Italianate style. The duplex features clapboard siding, a brick foundation, six over one sash wood windows, exterior chimneys on the south facade, and a hipped roof. The two-story duplex is three bays wide with a side passage entrances facing South Front Street and the eastern rear parking lot. Wooden entry stairs lead up to a partial width hipped roof porch supported by unadorned posts. The porch and stairs have simple balustrades and the entry stairs terminated with square panel newel posts. The six panel entry door is flanked by divided side lights. A square fixed window is located on the first story of the north facade and a side half glazed entry door with a small wooden stoop is located on the first story of the south facade. The entire dwelling is capped by wide frieze with rectangular vents and stylized brackets. The applicant proposes to remove all existing windows and replace them with West Shore Homes V3000 model 1650 vinyl double hung grilled between glass sculpted white six over six windows. Staff notes the condition that all windows will match the existing in size. Staff also notes that the single square window on the north facade size replacement was not specified in the application. The design standard state vinyl windows are not appropriate and do not differentiate between the contributing and non-contributing properties. And staff would like to enter its report in its entirety into the record of tonight's proceedings at this time. Any questions for? Uh, just one observation. The mm -hmm. description says six over one sash wood windows. I believe they're all six over sixes currently. Uh, yes, that was a um, mistake. I apologize. Oh, no. It just, just, you know, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. At this point, we'll give the applicant an opportunity to provide additional evidence or uh, answer questions. Good evening. My name's Connie Daydone, and I, along with my husband, Leon, are the current owners of 527 South Front Street. We would like to replace all 14 of the 36-year-old original windows with new V3000 model 1650 white vinyl double-hung windows that have the two by three grids, same as the current windows from West Shore Home. The new windows would improve the appearance of the home by eliminating the unsightly aluminum storm windows, some of which are missing, making the new sculptured grids more visible from the outside. The windows would not be wrapped, preserving the decorative white trim. Our home is non-contributing based on being built in 1987. Our townhouse, one of four, is located in the back with our front door facing the rear parking lot. From Front Street, only three of the windows would be somewhat visible from the long driveway to the rear parking lot. One of the windows is a stationary 58 by 48 inch picture window without grids. Um, to clarify, the fixed picture window would remain the same, just be replaced with double pane for efficiency. The other windows being 24 by 38 inch and 36 by 46 inch, all located on the right side if facing our front door. There are five windows on the front, three of which are 36 by 46 inches and two are 36 by 62 inches. On the left side, there are six windows, three of which are 36 by 46 inches, two of which are 36 by 62 inches, and one which is 24 by 38 inches. We have no rear windows. Our main reason for replacement is because when the home inspection was done a year and a half ago, when we were to purchase the home, the windows were rated defective. Many of the windows were leaking, causing cracks and moisture on the inside walls, in addition to the safety issue that the upper panes slide down when the window is unlocked and never go all the way up, leaving at least a half an inch space at the top. Also, one of the previous owners owned a dog and chewed the grids on several of the windows on the inside. In addition, recently, when opening an upstairs bathroom window during a renovation we're having done right now, the pane just dropped out of the window onto the driveway below and broke into shards of glass. 
It is important to note that our next door neighbor at 533 South Front Street, also in the historic district, has white vinyl windows on their home. Moreover, they were recently approved by the Historic Preservation Commission to use vinyl windows on a new pool house and garage. Another question the staff had was if we are required inquired about repairing instead of replacing the windows, and I'm a firm believer in putting the money toward a permanent fix instead of a temporary one. I would rather do it right the first time so we did not investigate repairing. What is the material the original windows are made out of? Wood. Do you have any other questions? Any other questions? Um, I'll, I'll I'll grant you that the, the windows, I'm sure, are not repairable, or if they are, they're going to fail again. The, the 1980s, and <clears throat> in my experience, the 1980s and 90s were a really dark period in building construction and materials. Um, have you considered replacing with wood windows, A, and are these going to be inserts, like uh, where they take out the, just the existing sashes and put a new frame with new windows inside of that existing frame? In other words, is the, is the entire opening going to get a little bit smaller? Not that I'm aware of. I think it fits right in where the same size because they came out and measured very specifically. So when they take the, when they remove the windows that are there, they yes. would, they're, they're taking out just the sashes, the parts that go up and down. Or the whole frame. Do you know which, what's coming out? They say they're they're not removing the trim. I assume, right? No, any, they're not, they're removing, not removing any trim, so they're no. probably just an insert that's filling in the space. Then. And it's a, okay. Correct. And you said that the big picture window is single pane. Are, are all of these windows single pane? Yes. That's why they have storm windows on the outside. Mm. Yeah. When the building was designed and built, they did a. A nice job. I think most observers look at these houses and, and probably take them for being antique and not, you know, just 36 years old. Right. So I, I'm a, a bit mixed. You know, we have this design standard 3.2 about if a window or door has been deteriorated beyond repair, replacement should match the original in material and other details. And then um, so anyways, I'm just, I'm, I, I understand where you're coming from with the buildings next door that are new construction. Um, I wouldn't stand in the way of, of everyone, I think, voting for your item, um, necessarily, but I just have this, a little bit of reticence about it, you know, to, to consider a wood window, I think. Because the wood windows of, of today are not the wood windows of 1986 or 87. And so they're just a lot better. They come with really good warranties, and it's a, generally a really good installation. Um, I'm wondering, is there a, a warranty that's provided with the new windows? Yes, I think it's a lifetime warranty on those. Lifetime on materials and labor? Mm -hmm. hmm, okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. We'll open it now, the evidentiary portion, to members of the public. And we'll close the evidentiary portion and move to commissioner deliberation. I'm not happy about putting the vinyl in when there was wood. When it was wood there. Yeah, I think when they, I, I don't know what the, ruling was in 1986 or 87 when this was, I assume, came through the commission. Did it, would it actually, for staff, would this have come through the commission? And, and it would have, right? And I wonder if... If it was new construction in 87, because that's the problem with the next door neighbor, that doesn't come in front of us. The project next door came in front of y'all just a few months ago. A couple months ago, yeah. And it's new, yeah, and it's new the, construction. And the building prior to the house that's on the lot also came before the commission. Okay. And so we approved a, a vinyl window and the new, the new construction a couple months ago. How did we do that? Okay. Well, I mean, all right. So these are not historic antique homes. 
Um, that's a factor. Uh, if I understand, there's actually four living units in these two buildings. Yeah, so probably if this is approved, I expect to see the other three shortly. Okay, so that would set a precedent there. Um, a building that's 33 years old, I mean, I'm kind of like, but there must have been a reason why, I mean, why, I think they had vinyl windows in 1987. So, and the other thing is, I manage a lot of properties, and one of the issues, I hope you get a good warranty, because I have some properties where they, what you're getting are called replacement windows, where they just put them in the sashes, and the properties I manage, for whatever reason, they've had a lot of leak issues with those kind of windows. A, a new window would be, you'd actually take that trim off the outside, and there would be a brand new window, like a new construction with a flange, and they work a lot better. But, you know, that's kind of your issue there. I'm just pointing that out. Um, I, I'm kind of one way or the other on, on this particular house with vinyl or wood, so let's see what everybody else says. I think if we make that precedent, we're going to um, end up with a bunch of vinyl windows. Ms. Wilson. I think if we make that precedent, we're going to end up with a bunch of vinyl windows in newer. I mean, if if it were vinyl, we couldn't say probably say anything. But if they're wood, I think they need to be replaced by wood. That's just that's what the standard says. So I'm just trying to stick with the standard. There was a project that it must have been us that approved it. If I'm not mistaken, if you look at page three of our packet, um, similar requests, staff found following recent approvals in the historic district residential and, and um, B 310 North 6th, it's a non-contributing structure I don't remember the detail of this, but remove existing one over one sash wood windows and install one over one vinyl windows. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, this commission's done that twice, as you'll see there right. on page three. There's one on Ann Street, at also 103 and at 103 Ann Street. Another non contributing structure. How did we do that? Or why did we do that? Does anybody remember? <laughs> Cue the video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, you need to come to the microphone to speak. We did investigate putting wood windows in, and the price was astronomical. It's like two and a half times the amount for vinyl. So it is. A lot of people won't replace them for that reason. So we did check into that a year ago, and it's probably gone up since. So. Okay. Then we have to. If I recall, the other two that you approved that are on the list there, they're kind of a similar date to this house in regards to like materials. And it, when Chris spoke of how that era is not the best building materials. Mm -hmm. I think that those were of similar time mm -hmm. frame as well. Oh, they're awful. Mm -hmm. Certifiably awful. Right. Like I said, I just, I'm, I just don't feel strong enough to stand in the way of, of this for this particular structure, personally. Okay. Then can we have a motion? I move to approve with conditions the installation of vinyl windows. Details are shown on the drawings, plans, photographs, submittals, and narrative statement containing the application and submittal materials and statements made at this meeting are part of this request unless otherwise noted. Um, this motion is based on the evidence presented before us, the application submittals, testimony, staff report, and findings of fact. The following conditions shall be applied to ensure compliance with the design standards. Those step set forth in staff report one through five. Uh, I think the condition also that um, 
that these are six over six, right? Not six over one is what's stated? Six over six is what's there now. Yeah, six over six. Proposed request with the conditions does comply with the Wilmington design standards for historic districts and landmarks, is compatible with the materials, features, design, context, and character of the historic building and the historic district in which it is located and is congruous with the site, streetscape, and historic aspects of the historic district residential as a whole, applicable design standards 1.6 and 3.2. Uh, can we have a second? Lack of a second. <coughs> so with lack of a second, I think that fails, if I'm not mistaken, right? Unless there's another motion. Do we have a substitute motion? <laughs> there's got to be a substitute motion. By default, there has to be. Right. I'll make a substitute motion. Um, I move to deny the installation of vinyl windows. Details as shown on the drawings, plans, photographs, submittals, and narrative statement contained in the application and supplemental materials and statements made at this meeting or part of the request, unless otherwise noted. The motion is based on the evidence presented before us, the applicant submittals, testimony, staff report, and the findings of fact. The following conditions shall be applied to ensure compliance. Um, the proposed request with condition does not comply with the Wilmington Design Standards for Historic Districts and Landmarks, is not compatible with the materials, features, design, context, and character of the historic building and the historic district in which it is located, and is not congruous with the site, streetscape, and historic aspects of the historic district residential as a whole. Applicable design standards 1.6, Secretary of the Interior Standards, standards 2 through 6, uh, standard 3.2, windows and doors, standards 1 through 6 and 13. There's a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion. All right, we will move to the next order of business, which is agenda item number three, to Church Street. The applicant proposes to make exterior alterations, including the modification of window and door openings and altering a rear porch. The subject property is located on the southwest corner of Church and Surrey Streets with the front, facing, front entrance facing north. The subject property is a contributing resource to the historic district residential and revisions to all facades of the building and site are subject to design review. The dwelling built circa 1915 is a cross gabled bungalow with a full width porch and asymmetrical windows along the front facade. The porch is supported by square paneled columns and has a balustrade with alternating width balusters. The three bay wide front facade features a tripartite window in the easternmost bay. This grouping has two over two, two two over two windows with a larger central eight over one window. The westernmost bay has paired two over two windows. The central entry features a partial light two panel door with side lights and a transom. The door light, side lights, and transom feature a diamond light pattern. The front facade also features a shed roof dormer with two clear story windows with a matching diamond light pattern. The western facade has two one story projecting bays under a single shed roof. Each bay has a tripartite window grouping with two over two windows. The side gable also features a rectangular vent and simple stylized rafter brackets. The applicant proposes to replace one two over two sash wood window on the eastern facade with a pillow reserve wood window with two over two grill and a casement operation. Staff wants to note that in the report it said western 
I apparently got my directions very confused in this report. And the this window is actually called out to be on the western facade, but it's actually on the eastern facade. I did it again later, so just FYI. Um, so now I'm, there's a couple of changes to the rear facade, so I'm going to start. You'll see there's a progression here. Um, the first, uh, first, the applicant proposes to modify the south facade through the installation of a new door. The proposed door will be a thermotrue benchmark door in craftsman style with a one-third vertical mutton glazing in mahogany. The applicant also proposes to expand the width of the rear porch. The existing porch is 147 square feet and the proposed porch will be 262 square feet, 29 feet long by eight inches wide. 29 feet, eight inches long. The applicant proposes that the porch extension will have a wood railing to match the front porch and that the porch extension will have a wood stair along the southern facade. The porch extension will also have a lattice underpinning, underpinning and will have a 12 over 2 hipped roof that will be clad in Tamco Titan XL asphalt shingles and black walnut that match the existing dwelling. The applicant also proposes to infill a portion of the porch. The infilled portion will be 9 feet wide by approxim and approximately 82 square feet. The infilled portion will be clad in 1 inch by 6 inch wood siding and will have one tugboat window on the western facade and one new salvage door on the eastern facade. And this is in the report where I switched those. Um, staff notes that the main portion of the dwelling is clad in aluminum siding and that there is a central window in the western bay and the western side bay that has been removed. Staff notes that the applicant mentions gutters in the material list, but no specifications were given at this time. Staff would like to enter tonight's report in its entirety to proceedings. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for staff? You, I'm sorry, you said there was a, a window removed on the western elevation? Yeah, I just, I had put eastern and it's actually western. So they're taking one, win they're replacing a window on the eastern and then the infill porch section is they're requesting a uh, tugboat window on the western facade and then on a door on the eastern facade of just the infield portion there. And I think I'd switched up the directions in the original staff report. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. We'd now like to invite the applicant to provide additional evidence or answer questions. Good evening, Jay Larson, number two, Church Street. Uh, there is a grave error on, um, on this window that is being asked to replace. The, the uh, original application shows on the Eastern side. The, the, the mistake was with the door on the laundromat. Can we go to that, uh, that drawing, please? All right, so all of that is correct. If you go around to the easterly side, please. That's the image there. Yeah, oh, okay, there, thank you. So the, the confusion was this door to, to my far right where the laundry, that basically this nine foot infill is a laundry area. So the entrance to the laundry area is this uh, new salvage door, as you can see the picture of. I think the, the write up was, it was on the westerly side and it's on the easterly side. That's the only confusion. However, the window, the actual window, um, you can go to the next slide before. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, keep going. Th this is this is not this window is in place. We're not changing that. Uh, we're not changing that window. The bathroom window is on the absolute other side of the building. It's. Do you have the um, the the um, plans that I submitted? So the only thing is changing on the east side. 
Correct. It's that window stays door. in place. There's nothing. Uh, that's a replacement window that I, that I inherited with the house, but that's I'm not asking to replace right, so it. So that's staying the way it is, and yes, only the door going into the laundry area Correct. is new. Yes. Okay. What he's saying, though, is he's replacing a window on the other side of the house. Uh, right. Yes. Yes. On the west. But that wasn't clear west in the information that was provided. Yeah. But I'll pull it up. Okay. And the uh, west side, is there a photograph of the west side again that we can see? Oh, I'm still I'm confused about this. Yeah, hang on just a second. Window, it looks like it's been filled in with a door panel. Okay, there it is. Sorry, that's not what you were asking. There it is. So if we go to Ooh, attachment five. Attach five, right. Oh, there you go. That's there the go. window we're replacing. Um, in the staff report that you mentioned, um, the window there, that one, he currently has a door infield there where it shows a window, and his, uh, but he's noted that it's temporary. No, no. Well, no, there's there's two different things going on here. So, can I? Is there a mouse here? Is there a mouse? Oh, right here. Oh, right. Okay. So this this is the window request to be replaced right here. This is a bathroom window to be replaced with an awning style window. It's, it's currently a double hung, um, faulty wood window. We're replacing it with a pillow reserve wood window. What is currently in place with the door is right here. Right. And that is twofold. One, that, that this window does never existed. And I, can, I have photos, but that is a gel. Uh, what was in there is a, uh, a uh, da 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 da. Uh, Jalous, Jalous, I always, it's spelled differently. But it, there, is a, there was a Jalous window in this position we also have a dumpster all right here. So I am in the middle of replacing, I found this piece, <laughs> the uppercase at the uh, archival. I'm going to replace this window with what is currently should be there. But what, when I inherited the house, there was a, there it was a Jalous window right here. And that's from the sixties. I mean, that's not a, yeah. it's not true to its, to its form. So I will be, re like I said, I found this piece uh, yesterday or not yesterday, uh, three days ago. And I'll find another piece or build this piece down here, but this will be replaced, but we're temporarily have it okay. secured so that well, so tools you're, don't get lost. And, so, so in the photograph, what looks to be a door, it's just a temporary covering and you're essentially installing a two by two, a, a wooden two by two window back in that location and making a triple that all three <coughs> will units will be the same. Uniform. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, all right. But the, uh, the application, and I apologize uh, if there was any confusion, but this is the window that we're asking to be replaced. And then while we're on this subject of the tugboat window, again, this is a laundromat. I'm, I'm a retired off the tug, local tugboats. Uh, this is my home, my lifelong home eventually. And so you'll see me a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep pecking away at this house to get it you know, in the right proper form, but I would Working like Working on to your frequent that. flyer miles for sure with us. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's, the, that's the gist of, of what that means. In the, in the, on the south elevation, you're proposing to infill what's now a door, and that can't remain a door, even with a new mahogany, uh, whoever the manufacturer was, because it, it enters a room, I presume, that's not it's suitable a, for entering off of a new bigger screen porch, right? R right, right. So that's entering into a mudroom, a literal mudroom. Yeah. Formal mudroom, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. Okay. 
Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. We'll now open the evidentiary portion to members of the public. We'll close the evidentiary portion and move to commissioner deliberation. Any comments or questions or anybody got a problem with it? I don't think so. If not, can we have a motion? Last time, um, the circular window was not approved when the applicant came forth with another um, application. So is it approved this time? Well, I mean, I think it was that and a, and a whole variety of other things that was... Right, but it wasn't the window itself. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that was included. I mean, we just... Right. The, the entire application was... We couldn't understand real well. Um, so the entire application was not approved. Not the window in particular. <clears throat> All right. I move to approve with conditions making exterior alterations, including modifying windows, openings, and rear porch. Details as shown on the drawings, plans, photographs, submittals, and narrative statement contained in the application and submittal materials. The statements made at this meeting are part of the request unless otherwise noted. The motion is based on the evidence presented before us, the application submittals, testimony, staff reports, including findings of facts. The following conditions shall be applied to ensure compliance with the design standards, those set forth in the staff report one through seven. The proposed request with conditions does comply with the Wilmington design standards for historic districts and landmarks, is compatible with the materials, features, design, context, and character of the historic buildings and historic district in which it is located and is congruous with the site, streetscape, historic aspects of the historic residential as a whole. Uh, all applicable design standards apply. You have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. With the nay. Oh. One nay. Motion carries. Last agenda item then is 111 South 5th. <laughs> the applicant proposes to replace the existing tile roof of the front porch with a composite tile roof. The subject property is located on the east side of South Fifth Avenue between Dock and Orange Streets and is a contributing resource to the historic district residential. Revisions to all facades of a building and the site are subject to design review in this district. The David Apartment House, 111 South Fifth Avenue, built circa 1911, is a two-story painted tapestry brick building originally constructed as a duplex. Now a single family residence, the building features a stepped gable with side parapets, interior chimneys, and a full width two-story hipped roof porch on the front facade. The front porch roof features exposed rafters and interlocking terracotta barrel tile and is supported by square brick piers with decorative stone elements. The porch features a simple balustrade with a diamond pattern at the center. The Mission Revival style stepped Parapet has a stone cap, applied carved stone details, and a central tripartite window. The first story front facade has a tripartite window in the central bay, with the central window having a decorative tracery in the upper sash. The window is flanked by entry doors with single light transoms. On the second story, a central double leaf, full divided light door is flanked by one over one sash windows and a transom. The outermost bays have blind openings and one over one sash windows set within segmental arched openings along both side facades. Uh, they would remove the existing front porch roof and install Westlake Royal Roofing Unified Steel Stone Covered Metal Barrow Vault Tile in the color of Barcelona. Staff notes that the original clay tile roof was damaged around 
2018 and was removed by a contractor and never completed the project. And the roof is partially visible from Fifth Avenue. Staff would like to enter its report in its entirety into the record of tonight's proceedings at this time. Any questions for staff? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We will now invite the applicant to come forward and provide additional information or answer questions. <laughs> Sir, you need to be sworn in. I'm to your left. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. That was very exciting. <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm David Haslam. Nice to meet you. Um, so just to answer real quick, if you're wondering why we're proposing to change the material, the biggest issue is we cannot find somebody to replace with actual tile. The actual skill to do the work and the size for what the job requires, um, what we've been told is requires somebody to come in from out of town and I can't get folks to really quote us on it. So we worked with um, Flores on this they were the ones that recommended to use this replacement um, material that should, I mean, given where it is, it's very difficult to see in general, but I think in keeping with the spirit of the house from what folks would be able to normally see, I think it should be, I think it's an appropriate uh, recommendation. So, um, and I'll be happy to go on record with who that other contractor was because um, um, we had to, um, he took our money and left as part of the project. So, sorry. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so was the, the the other roofing con? You you looked you considered another roofing contractor and they were going to do yes. clay. So I tried to get quotes from at least five different ones. Only two submitted. One that submitted with the lowest price was the guy that started the work and then admitted he couldn't finish the work. Um, and he has done work historically, but not since for this for this neighborhood. He had done it for three different houses, um, and that was why we used him. You guys have dealt with him before on the uh, yellow house on Fifth that has come before here that also recently went with Flores. So we were in the same situation and chose to go with somebody that we could trust that could actually do the work that was quoted. So, and I I looked. Uh, first of all, I was surprised that, that Flores and Foley didn't do clay tile. But anyways, I looked at um, Westlake. I went to this website, and I tried, like, everything to find out what this act this material was. I, I, I had no idea. Like, I, couldn't, I just couldn't tell what it was anyway. But anyway, so now I understand. It's steel, stone-colored. It's, it's metal. Yeah. But it, but it's... But it, ha it has this shape. I mean, it ha it's not like an illusion. It has that barrel tile. Like when they go to install it, it looks like the clay barrel tile. It has that. That is correct. So, and I have no preference on color. So if there's a preference for one of the colors, I just tried to go with the one that mirrored yeah, whatever's the, closest to the historic one the most. Yeah, okay. I, yeah it's, I, the only thing is the color because to me, looking at tile, the sunset gold looked more like the tile. I thought the Barcelona looked very, very dark, but the pictures are deceiving, so it's kind of, meh. all right, whatever. Okay, thank you. Cool. We'll now open the evidentiary portion to members of the public. We'll close the evidentiary portion and go to commissioner deliberation. Is it just the um, tile? Did I miss something. Is it just the porch that is this tile? The rest of it is a different kind of roof? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, we're just talking about the porch. That's it. Seems reasonable to me. Yeah, me too. Okay, can we have a motion then? I move to approve um, replacing front roof porch with composite tile roof. Details shown on the drawings, plans, photographs, submittals, and narrative statement contained in the application and supplemental materials and statements made at this meeting are part of this request unless otherwise noted. 
Um, this motion is based on the evidence presented before us, the application submittals testimony staff report, including findings of fact. Um, the following conditions shall be applied to ensure compliance with design standards, those set forth in the staff report one through five. The, repo the proposed request with, um, does comply with the Wilmington design standards for historic districts and landmarks, is compatible with the materials, features, designs, context, and character of the historic building and the historic district in which it is located and is congruous with the site streetscape historic aspects of the historic district residential as a whole. Applicable design standards 1.6, 3.1 roofs. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. That ends the evidentiary hearing on the agenda. Um, the next item is whether we have any items from members of the commission. I, I do have something. Yeah, just, just because I, Ms. Huffman, I don't want to get home too early. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, it, basically, around the block from me is 620 Chestnut, where we approved the addition. And it's quite a bit of work, and apparently it's going to be going on until March. And one of the things I've been noticing is there's a lot of replacement of uh, siding, of the windows, of the, the, the soffit, the fascia, just, just about every conceivable thing, including much of the interior. So th there's a story, and I, it, it may this is more of a philosophical question for the uh, HWF too, with their plaques and all that, but if your gran great-grandfather passes a hammer down through the family to your grandfather, and your grandfather breaks the head of the hammer and replaces it, and he gives it to your father, and your father breaks the handle of the hammer and replaces it, are you actually going to receive your great-grandfather's hammer? I'm not giving you an answer to that, I'm just posing that question. So I guess my question is on a historic home, now obviously, if in 365 days they tear it down and rebuild it, well, then it's not a historic home. But what happens when elements, tremendous amount of elements are replaced in a historic home, so really at the end of the day, 10% of the original home is there? That's the point I'm bringing up. And, and like I said, please go buy this house and take a look and, and you'll see. I mean, and I understand there's bad siding, there's this, there's, but it's getting to the point where Basically, the original house is pretty much gone, you know, and when it's done, it will look like it. But again, I, I just want to bring that point up so maybe we can think about it or maybe the HWF can think about it, you know, with these homes in the future. That, that's and, th it. and this is something we was before the commission recently? Yes, everything yes. that that house is doing was approved by the commission. With the exception of some front windows that they were placing because I approved it at staff level because they found old photographs that showed the Jefferson style windows and that's what they're installing now. And, and I'm not saying the house doesn't need work. I, I'm just saying when you're replacing, 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 eventually it's like, again, it's almost like they tore the house down and started from scratch. There, there's so little of the original lumber. I mean, there's gonna be some floor beams in there and some other stuff, but you know, to, to what degree do you, can you say, oh, this is a historic home when you've done that much work? That's the point I'm bringing up. So and, and again, it's going to be beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just... Are they using, are you saying they're using different materials, but they're not altering the look of the house? Are they the shape? The, well, right now, I mean, they, they took down the corbels. They, they kind of had to disassemble everything. I'm hoping somebody's got a picture to put it back the way it was. But again, it's just the extent of the renovation of this house. I mean, they totally gutted, and we don't have a purview over the interior, but the, it's totally gutted. I mean, basically, I think the stairs might be left, but, but overall, the house, I've never seen a house so renovated, let me put it that way. So you're referring to mostly things on the interior, right? It, this is mostly, in, you're referring to the interior work there well no the exterior too i mean again we approved it the windows are being replaced they're replacing the siding uh i'm not sure you know it, it's a continuous thing and maybe jessica knows everything but you know is the whole porch deck going to be replaced etc 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 so i you know again 
what original pieces of that house will be left come March of 2024, I, I'm thinking not much at this point. That, that's the only point I'm bringing up is, is, you know, when can you still call an historic house an historic house when it's been 85, 90% replaced? And, and again, it, it's not something, you know, we can decide or whatever. It's just a, basically the philosophy of, you know, calling something historic, period. But that, that's it. Won't be eligible for tax credits for sure. <laughs> Future. I guess I mean, so. It's un, that's unfortunate. I'm, I'm sure they'll be applying. Uh, um, just to chime in, there is a preservation theory about materiality and preserving materials. Um, you know, with modern buildings, like say the Lever House, um, that entire curtain facade got repaired. So um, you, by you know, they had to, right? It failed, and so it's still considered a historic landmark. Um, it doesn't deny its history because they had to replace the entire facade. It's just, you know, there's different right. thoughts in preservation theory in regards to that. Well, and I believe they still consider Tryon Palace historic, but I believe that was extensively rebuilt, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. You're probably better at that than I am. But anyway, um, that, that's the only point I just wanted to bring up because I just, Every time I walk the dog, I, I see another piece of this house being replaced, and that's it. Motion, Motion to adjourn. Second. Yeah. Thank you.